Hey guys and welcome to another Polymer Clay tutorial. Today we are going to create Bloodhound from Apex Legends. So everyone is talking about Apex Legends and it was just a matter of time when this game will find its way to my channel. And there was one character in particular which you asked a lot for that I should create and that's Bloodhound. The one we are creating today. This and also Pathfinder. And both of these characters don't have a human face. And this makes it possible for me to create them because you know that I really suck at creating human faces. But this isn't a human face, you can see right now in the background. <laughs> this is the, the character sheet you can find on the internet. And I think that's it for the official biography. Let me read it out for you, it's very short. Bloodhound is known across the Outlands as one of the greatest game hunters the Frontier has ever seen. And that's about all anyone knows. Okay, that's not much. Their identity is a mystery wrapped in layers of rumors. They are fabio, fabio, fa, sorry, fab, fabio, <laughs> fabulously. <clears throat> Let's go with. They are wealthy, a bloodthirsty murderer, a Goliath whisperer, with whisperer, whisperer, a former slave half bad and a dozen of other things depending on who's doing the whispering. Oh, that's nice. All anyone truly knows is that Bloodhound is a force to be reckoned with within the ep in the Apex games. Bloodhounds... Oh, I should stop reading out this. I'm not really good at reading out English texts in general when I don't know the words. So, um, you can read it, you can look it up by yourself. So, we don't really know much about this character. He's very mysterious and dark. And there was one fact which was really funny about this guy. Everyone says he, so Bloodhound is a he, but the voice actor is a woman. Yeah, you really should look it up if you don't believe me. There's a video. I have uh, just seen where you can see all the characters from Apex Legends and also the voice actors and I was just like, huh? <laughs> when, when I saw um, the Bloodhound character skin with the female voice actor right next to him. So that was a bit strange. Some comments asked if uh, Bloodhound is transsexual. From the official information from the biography, you can't tell if it's a he or a she. That's really interesting because the official texts only says, uh, say Bloodhound and not he or she. Maybe this is some kind of, um, of an eth ethnic group like the Tusk Raider from Star Wars. You know, these wrapped in layers characters where you can't tell if they are male or female. Maybe they have both and it's the same with Bloodhound. It's just an ethnical group and not just one character. Ha! What do you say about that? <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, enough of this um, speculation. Let's come back to the creation itself. You have seen that I started wrapping the aluminum wire, the skeleton, with different layers for this skin, which looked so crazy detailed. I was looking for a system to start creating with, so I didn't want it to create just uh, with one detail and then go to, to another body part and, and so further and on. I decided to start with the toes and go up to the head um, because this makes it way more easy when you have uh, some kind of a system on creating a character. 
this is why we first created the shoes, the boots, and now these are the knee protection. The knee protection and there are also some shoulder pads look really similar. They are yellow and for the knee protection we also have this brown, brownish, red, red, brownish stripe. And there's also a white line right on top of it and we will draw it after oven hardening with a white pen. This is the shirt, skirt, skirt he's wearing. Now yeah, maybe this is another hint that it's not a he but a she. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to judge. Men are also allowed to, to wear dresses and skirts, sure. I have used a lot this, this yellow gift wrap you have seen and it's a great way to get the clay in position. Especially you, let's say you want to create a belt and there is too much uh, bulky clay underneath. So I just take this gift wrap to get the clay underneath really tight and really good. Uh, you can see what I, I am talking about and it really works great because then you don't have to worry about the different layers of clay to become too thick. I don't know what this is but it looks like a belly protection or I thought this is a separate a spare helmet he's just wearing in front of him. <laughs> Who knows? Or a colander for cooking. <laughs> well, this guy also have to eat, right? Also on the battlefield, so it makes sense. In um, some videos I read also some comments about this character, which said that he or she looks like a samurai and I think this is true. It's not only about all the different decoration parts and all the pockets and especially the helmet which really looks a bit Asian to me. It's also the colors. I know there are so many different skins you can um, choose from but um, this original colored skin with a ochre, a lot of ochre colors, the brown and we have the oil of green, we have the dark red. It looks so samurai-ish. <laughs> I, I really think so. This is the huge strap he is wearing across his stomach and it goes right there and we will use this strap, this belt, for some further pockets. This is Indian red and we will throw in some ochre. I did that with nearly all of the colors on this creation. In the end, in the final creation, you really get the feeling that all the colors matches perfectly together. And it's just um, because I threw in some ochre into all the other colors as well. Of course, they are not that shiny anymore and not that strong, but they fit perfectly together. Well, unless it's brown, because there is ochre inside anyway. Let's take a tiny, tiny piece of silver clay for the buttons on these two pockets. Yeah, you've seen that uh, image on my Instagram account, Clay Claim, before, <laughs> where I complained about all the pockets I um, have to create for this character, for Bloodhound. Oh, it looks so great. I'm not really a, a pocket guy, but uh, I think they look so cool while creating on skins. <laughs> Also on a lot of uh, Fortnite skins there are so many tiny pockets and I love that always because they are not that difficult to create. You have just this opening mechanism, you have a button uh, uh, and that's it, that's it for the tiny pockets and they look so authentic. 
this is a gift wrap. We use it again and let's cut away some ochre. Yeah, this will be the position where we will add the hands later, the gloves, because they are red. Or maybe the skin color of this guy is red. Yeah, this is also possible. I try to get the arms into the right position. You've seen the raven in the intro, of course, which is sitting on his left arm. And the, uh, the right arm will be the one where he is holding his knife. So this is just some silver clay and we will add some yellow. I even threw in some ochre into this yellow that it isn't that strong anymore. And these decoration parts go right to his arms. Now I'm really curious how many of you have already played Apex, Apex, Apex Legends. Please let me know, participate in the poll. I haven't. And I'm not really able to because I'm a Mac guy. It's only available on PC for Windows and Xbox and PlayStation 4, which I also don't own. I have a Switch. Yeah, maybe with the huge popularity of this game um, they will bring it to further platforms. I mean, it's the same way Fortnite started, right? Um, it's, it started first on PC, I think, and on Xbox and PlayStation, but I'm not sure. Then it came, uh, it went mobile, and this also includes, for me, this also includes Switch and mobile phone. This is the knife he's wearing. It's just a very short knife. Very hunter, hun huntish knife. And we will also create the grip, which you don't see because it's inside, or the, the red hand, his left hand is wrapped around it. But this is just a simple technique and it looks nice. Let's add another tiny detail for the top of the knife and that's it. Now we can focus on the upper part of Bloodhound. Yeah, when I started this character I knew that he would be difficult to create uh, but I have never thought about how long it will take <laughs> and it took nine hours to create this guy it was really crazy I started this week on Monday and well I had other stuff to do of course but I worked on um, almost every day since yesterday I finished the creation yesterday and then um, today I was working on the video editing stuff and all that kind of uh, post-production thing and I um, hadn't expected this creation to be that difficult. Somehow I think um, I could have made him way more easy and less detailed. But I was so into this creation, I enjoyed the whole process so much that I <laughs> decided to really go crazy on this guy. Yeah, this is some kind of... it's not a rocket. It's not a pocket rocket. <laughs> I don't know what this engine is supposed to be. Well, I can assume. <clears throat> let's let's. Uh, okay, what what do we got? We have two engines, and it's all wrapped to his belt. <laughs> so maybe he is able to fly, and this is really a pocket rocket where he can launch and fly just a few. Uh, feet above the ground <laughs> He has some really powerful skills in some gameplay videos. I have seen um, I saw this ability called Trekker and he is able to see Footsteps and doors opened or destroyed and enemies uh, For the last 60 seconds in the game and everything is highlighted in red and this is so powerful I mean, you, you go just across a corner 
and you see these red footprints on the on the ground and you know that there will be an enemy right behind the corner this is mind-blowing this is so tactical this is so strong for a character but still have no clue what what this pocket rocket is <laughs> let's focus on the head I assumed that the skin color would be something like gray ochre <laughs> but well I don't really care because now we take this is it called perforator and this is aluminum foil and this will be for the glasses the reason why I don't really care about the skin color is um, it's covered <laughs> it's covered underneath different layers wraps these are the glasses. Let's place the foil right in the middle. I haven't done that before, so I'm really curious how it works out. This is a black outline. It's not only uh, for decoration. I really hope that this outline will also hold these tiny pieces of aluminum foil in position. And then we have a lot of different stripes and folds and whatever in brown and they won't uh, they can hardly be seen because he's wearing that crazy helmet <laughs> but what we can see is this oxygen mask is it oxygen well it's a mask i can tell you it's a mask and uh, we will work on some details now that looked funny, like a duck. <laughs> let's, let's mix a very dark silver for this nose stripe. Yeah, let's call it nose stripe. <laughs> and right in front there is um, a hole, an opening part of the mask, probably where the air is filtered. All the other characters in Apex Legends are not wearing any mask, right? This means that Bloodhound is not able to breathe oxygen. And this means Bloodhound is not human. Woo! We are making some progress on this guy to get to know him better. <laughs> yeah, he's probably an alien. Let's try to get some really, really thin stripes of silver in front. Oh yeah, this is the filter. I love it, how it looks like. And this is... Uh, <laughs> Do you know this feeling when you are right in the middle of a battle, on the battleground, and you need salt and pepper? <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, the, what it is. Another two tiny stripes. <laughs> and we will place it onto the torso. And now let's uh, take the scissors. This will be for the shoulder protection. And it contains of three layers. We have the black layer I already created. Then we have the ochre. And then this yellow, yellow ochre it is. And we will place it right on top. We have four screws on each of them. And um, after oven hardening, we will also take a white pen to get the last colored layer on top. Yeah, maybe we should move all the tiny pockets. And what are these? Uh, you can't see them right now. What are these three buttons right in front? Are these grenades? He is throwing. I think so. I may have seen uh, some gameplay where he is throwing some uh, grenades. This is probably the oxy oxygen filter because the tubes are going in and this I am currently creating looks like a quiver for some arrows. I think some of the more legendary skins um, really have some arrows on the back, so this really may be a quiver. 
this will be the tube. And there is this easy technique to make it look like a cube by just using any kind of a sharp edge and just rolling over that you get these prints. There's a very tiny, a very thin tube on the left side. And now let's take um, some olive green for the helmet. And we need two different kinds of olive green. I really feel sometimes like one of these um, chefs on television which are telling you how to cook. <laughs> this is the, let's call it silverish green. And we have the just olive green. This is the shape of the helmet. Well, let's make it a bit thinner. And there is this silver greenish outline. And we can place it right on top of his head. I try to get this shape really nice. And these are maybe some feathers or french fries. I'm not really sure how to read these. Yeah, probably these are french fries because we already got salt and pepper. <laughs> I, I don't really want to make fun of this guy. No, honestly, I love this character design. I just love it. The way he looks right now. Okay, he reminds us of Boba Fett from Star Wars, but that's okay. He still has so many unique French fries details. This is a very thin wire and we will use these for the decoration parts which are hanging from his helmet. Um, my neighbors, well the neighbors from my parents used to have these chimes, these tiny tiny bells which are moving when the wind is blowing and they are a garden <laughs> and this was always really nice to listen to and these things reminded me of, of that. Well this guy is um, a game hunter so I guess that these things are not making any noise <laughs> but they look really nice and unique as well. So we are wrapping um, some black clay around the very thin wire because these will be the claws, the claws from the raven which we will place on the arm of Bloodhound. Some lines for details and there is also this silver wrap around that you know that um, they are counted, <laughs> that the pigeons and the birds are counted. So this means this guy, this raven is officially, officially counted by the birds department from your city. <laughs> Some details. This guy is just black clay, nothing more than black clay. And this means we have to be really careful about all the tiny lines and scratches we are doing. Because uh, this is what, what gives all the details to this bird. This is a nice um, technique to get all the tiny feathers in. And maybe we should add some more feathers to the neck. Oh, this looks nice. I think he, she, it, the bird, looks quite authentic. Um, I did some raven feathers on the female skin. What, what's it called? Ravage. Ravage skin, yeah, from Fortnite. So for, for those of you who are still really familiar with the game Apex Legends, um, did I get it right? There are just these six characters, these six different kinds um, of playable characters you can choose from and that's it. I know they all have different abilities and um, 
different ways of playing with them. The uh, one you have a tank, I would guess, but I'm not sure. You have Bloodhound as a really tactical character. And that's it. Or did I um, miss something? Yeah, maybe I should really play this game. But this would mean I I would have to buy a console or a PC. Uh, I know what we should do. We are ready to go into the oven. Freshly baked Bloodhound! Yeah, we finished all the clay sculpting process and all we have to do, well that doesn't really sound difficult, but it still is, is to assemble all the different parts. I'm cutting away some parts of the handle from the knife so we can glue it into his hand and also gluing this feathered friend onto his arm, the right arm and the pocket rocket as well. We make another black outline. I changed um, this. I haven't shown you in the video. There was first there was a black outline and then I went with silver. Now let's take the transparent polish and we really try to make all the silver parts on this creation shiny. Uh, bird beak, the eyes, oops, this was too much of transparent polish, the pocket rocket, and this is the white pen for the shoulder patches and also the knee protection. There is this white stripe. I really love this white pen because it, it covers up so, so good. And there is um, some fur on the shoulders on one side. This also looks nice. Let's go with some gray. I did that first before on the marshmallow skin. I have never... Um, no, that's not right. I used it on the prisoner skin, stage one. I used the gray to get uh, some shadows uh, into the creation. And somehow I really love the effect because it's not much of work, but you still get some more realistic um, and used looked objects or body parts or whatever you have just created. In this case, it just looks a bit dirty and I love this on this creation. The last working step, whoa. I can't believe it. I think we did it. <laughs> That's it! Blood out from Apex Legends! Before today's video is over, please let me know what I should create next. Should it be Apex Legends? What do you think about that game? Write it down in the comments. I guess that's it for today. Have a great weekend and take care guys. Bye! I am your father. You know, Bloodhound? <laughs>